Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, my name's Naomi, and this is my husband, Ian, and we're from Leeds. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Leo, this is Sam, uh, we're from Manchester, and we're mates. Couple number three. Hello, this is my friend, Hannah. She's from Stockport, and I'm Lynn, and I'm from Runcorn. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Hannah. This is my dad, Martin, and we're from Bristol. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Very warm welcome to each and every one of you. It's lovely to have you with us. We'll get a chance to chat a little bit further throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's mad, he's bad, and he dresses like your dad. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, Hello. A lot of familiar faces. Three returning hairs from the last show. Uh, Martin and Hannah got through to the uh, the head-to-head. -head. Our other Hannah with Lynn first round, unfortunately, and Sam and Leo round two. Still very Hannah heavy, which is great. 25% Hannah up there, which is lovely to see. That's good. One new pair, Ian and Naomi, and uh, they're going to bat first. I know. Podium one. I know. How about that? I know. Everyone else looking very smug. Yes. <laughs> They've been here before and they're just sitting back, the eyes drilling into the back of Ian and Naomi's head. Can yeah. you imagine the pressure, yeah. the tension I know. I know. that they must be feeling I know. at this I moment? Know. I know, well, at least we're easing them into it by this. <laughs> yeah, our little chat, a little preamble just to put them in there. I think ease. that's the key. It'll be fun. Perfect. It will be fine. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now, listen to this. Chris and David didn't win the jackpot last time, which means we have another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at an applause-worthy £2,000. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play for it. All you have to remember is this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So just keep your scores low. Do everything you can to keep your scores low. Best of luck. Our first category this afternoon is... Library books. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Okay, and the question concerns most borrowed authors 2015 to 16. Richard. Yes, yeah, simply on each board, we're going to show you seven pairs of books written by the same person. We need you to tell us the name of the authors in each of those cases, please. They all appear on the list of the most borrowed authors from libraries. But uh, it's just pairs of books. Who wrote these pairs of books? Excellent. OK, so we're looking for the authors of these pairs of books. Here is our first board of seven pairs. And we have got The Gruffalo, What the Ladybird Heard, J.D. The Liverpool Rose, Time to Say Goodbye, K.F. Kiss the Girls, Cross Justice, J.P. The Story of Tracy Beaker, Hetty Feather, J.W. Saints of the Shadow Bible, Black and Blue, I.R. Demon Dentist, Gangster Granny, D.W. And The Body in the Library, Murder on the Orient Express, AC. I'll read those again. The Gruffalo, What the Ladybird Heard, JD. The Liverpool Rose, Time to Say Goodbye, KF. Kiss the Girls, Cross Justice, JP. The Story of Tracy Beaker, Hetty Feather, JW. Saints of the Shadow Bible, Black and Blue, IR. Demon Dentist, Gangster Granny, DW. And The Body in the Library, Murder on the Orient Express, AC. There we are. Naomi, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here from Leeds. Uh, what keeps you busy in Leeds, Naomi? Um, working. So um, I work at the council. I'm a senior financial manager at Leeds City Council. Very so good. That's all week. That's all week. Um, what happened? Oh, and then the weekends come. And then, then the weekends come, and I go cycling. Oh. So. Now, in the lovely countryside around there. Oh, exactly. Beautiful countryside around there. Now, are you a bit of a cycling addict? I wouldn't say I was a very good cyclist, but I really enjoy yeah. cycling. Yeah. But you do it every weekend. Do you? Most weekends. I'm, I'm a member of a cycling club, so we all go out together. Oh, that's nice. How many of you are there in the club? There are about 100 in the club, all women. Yeah. Um, and we, we meet up and we cycle to a cafe, spend oh, quite important. a lot of time in the cafe, that's and important. then cycle back. I mean, what, what are you doing about? It's a half a mile up the road, <laughs> cafe. So it can be yeah. more than a mile sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you've got this whole gang of people who cycle at your kind of speed. Absolutely. Oh, I, I cycle at talking speed. Good. Yeah. Good. So that's okay. You can chat. It's that's not too good. serious. No. Not, not okay. my group, no. Very good, I'm pleased to hear that. Now, Naomi, what about our pairs of books? I'm going to be honest, I would say this could be easier. I would say that too. Mm. Yes. I'm going to go for 
Demon Dentist and Gangster Granny, and I think that's David Walliams. David Walliams says Naomi. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said David Walliams. He's right. Down it goes to 26. Not bad. Good start to the game. The 11th most borrowed children's author. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Leo, welcome back. Hello. Remind us what you do, Leo. Uh, salesman in Manchester. And what are you selling in Manchester at the moment, Leo? Uh, I sell uh, professional messages when customers are on hold to a business. Oh. So, so <laughs> instead of listening to a piece of music, yeah. it's, um, marketing, messages, it's yeah. marketing messages. Oh, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. <laughs> If there's anything that would improve me having to be on hold to somebody when I'm paying it already, be. it's them making money out of me being on hold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there we are. Now, Leo, uh, what are you going to go for from uh, our pairs of books here? There's only two on there which I know, and I, I'm struggling to figure out which one's going to be better than the other one. But because I know my mum would kill me if I didn't say this one, I'm going to go with Agatha Christie um, for the bottom answer. OK, Agatha Christie says, Leo... Let's see how many of our 100 people said Agatha Christie. 26 is the only score we have posted at the moment. And the oh, score is 57. That's so I know, but given it's Agatha Christie, it, it, it wouldn't be his mum that killed him, I but in the end, she'd yeah. be the suspect all along. It would be a disgruntled person on the end of a phone. Yes. Oh, it would, it would. And then there, there, there would be 64 million suspects. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, Lynn, welcome back. Lovely Thank to have you. you with us again. Now, last time we had to say goodbye to you in round one. Yes. You will see no repeat of that. Please, 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 today. Um, remind what you do, Lynn. Yeah, I'm a retired nurse after 40 years in the NHS. 40 years in the NHS. And uh, what sort of things do you like to do in your spare time? For fun, I go fishing. Um, I knit and I look after the grandchildren. Very good. Very good indeed. Now, Lynn, um, how do you like this round? The two that I knew were gone. I'm going to have to play a punt okay. and go for... a punt and a guess. And a guess. Um, Liverpool Rose, Catherine Forrester. Catherine Forrester for the Liverpool Rose. Time to say goodbye. Catherine Forrester. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Catherine Forrester, if it is. No. Bad luck, I'm afraid. An incorrect answer. Did you make the name up, Catherine Forrester? No, I knew Forrester, but I couldn't think of the first name. Right, I see. OK. Well, that scores you 100 points. It'd be a good pen name, though, for someone. Would it though? Yeah, someone sitting He's at home just about to send off a novel. Yes. Catherine Forrester. Catherine Forrester. Thank you very much indeed. Martin, welcome back. Great to have you here from Bristol. Um, and remind us what you do. Uh, I work with a group of local Methodist churches uh, in North Somerset. Very good. And how big is the group? How many churches in your, there in your are eight, team? Eight churches in a reasonably small geographical area. I, I see. And you, uh, you, you, you're an enabler. You go That's around, it. just make sure everything's everything's. Yeah. So I'm trying well. to encourage the churches to think about how we can better engage with the local communities and share that the Christian message in Very today's good. world. Okay. So, Martin, you are the last person to have this board. Um, is your heart... Leaping or sinking? I'm afraid it's sinking. Oh, Martin, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just talk through that board? And see well, if I could come up with anything? random names for most of them, but they would be random names. I got in my head something like Katie Foyle, maybe, for the Liverpool Rose, but I'm going to plump for Ian Rankin, because I know he's an author, but I've no idea if he wrote those books, but that's what I'm okay. saying. OK. Saints of the Shadow Bible and Black and Blue, Ian Rankin says Martin. Let's see if that's a very, very clever bit of matching of a name to initials. Uh, or let's see if it's rubbish. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ian Rankin. It is clever. It's exactly what it is, Martin. Well, 100's our high score, 26 is our low, and you fly past both of them. Down to 10. There's your reward. Very well done indeed. 10 for Ian Rankin. Yeah, two terrific books as well from uh, from either end of Ian Rankin's career. Now, let's fill in the rest of these. We've still got the uh, the most borrowed children's author and the most borrowed adults author are both up on this board still. So JD, the Gruffalo, Julia Donaldson, Julia Donaldson, most borrowed children's author. I would have scored you 23 points. The best answer on the board is KF, 
and that's Katie Flynn, and very well done if you said that. Four points for that. Now, the most borrowed author in British libraries on this list is this next one, because the girls and Cross Justice, James Patterson. James Patterson, yeah, the thriller writer. He would have scored you 13, and the wonderful Jacqueline Wilson is the story of Tracy Beaker. 30 points for that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are halfway through our first round. Let's take a look at those scores. Ten, Martin. Very well done, Ian Rankin. Uh, you earned that through sheer deduction, but uh, very well done. Puts you at the top of the table. 26 where we find Naomi and Ian. 57 is where we find Leo and Sam. And then 100 is where Lynn and Hannah B currently are. A nice slow score from you, Hannah, and the next pass might be enough to keep you in the game. So good luck with that. Uh, we're about to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, well, let's put seven more pairs of books up on the board, and here they are. We have got Rotten Romans, Groovy Greeks, TD, Sycamore Road, The Runaway Jury, JG, A Wanted Man, 61 Hours, LC, The BFG, The Minpins, RD, The Butterfly Lion, Warhorse, MM, Five on a Treasure Island, Well Done Secret, 7, EB, and Montana Sky, Vision in White, NR. I'll read those all again. Rotten Romans, Groovy Greeks, TD, Sycamore Row, The Runaway Jury, JG, A Wanted Man, 61 Hours, LC, The BFG, The Min Pins, RD, The Butterfly Line, Warhorse, MM, Five on a Treasure Island, Well Done, Secret 7, EB, and Montana Sky, Vision in White, NR. Hannah, welcome back to Pointless. You did so well last time into the head-to-head. -head. You'd probably yeah. be able to go a little bit further this time if you possibly can. Now, remind us what you do, Hannah. Um, I'm a project manager at a glass and pottery supply company. That is right. And uh, what are your interests, Hannah? Um, I like going to gigs and festivals. Very like good. That. But how many festivals a year do you tend to get to? Um, I like going to Glastonbury. I've been to Glastonbury twice and I loved it. Um, I quite like going to more local festivals as well. Stuff Very like nice. Now, you've been incredibly well set up by your dad there. Ten yeah. is what's on your podium at the moment, which means 89 points or less gets you into the next round. Yeah. So, mm. um, I know a few. Um, I'm not sure which would be the lowest, but I'm going to go for the top one and say Terry Deary. Terry Deary says, Hannah, OK, here's your red line, lovely and high. Get below that with Terry Deary and you are into round two. It's right, and you're through. Terry Deary is a good answer. Look at that, he's your dad by one. Nine, taking the total up to 19, the lowest total of the round. That's the way to play the game. Well played, yeah, the author of the Horrible Histories series. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Hannah, welcome back to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us again. Remind us, what do you get up to? I'm a biomedical scientist in Manchester. That is right. And uh, what sort of things do you like to do in your spare time? I like to crochet anything with corners or without corners. With or without corners. Yeah. Crochet unlimited. Yes. There it is. The yeah. world is your crochet oyster. Absolutely. Um, do you just keep it with you at all times? Oh, yeah. Just I've in done, case? I've, yeah, there's, yeah, there's plenty going around around here at the minute. I've heard yeah. There's yeah. <laughs> a lot of crochet going down. I mean, how long does it take for you to make? I don't know. What's, what's a sort of, what's something we could all appreciate the size of? A pair of gloves. A pair of gloves. How long would it take yeah. you to make a pair of gloves? Oh, well, if I miss the fingers off a couple of hours. <sighs> Seriously? Yeah. A pair? With, yeah. with the fingers? Maybe three or four hours. Take longer if they're in my hands, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but I'd give it a good go. Thank you. You could do that in a, easily in a day. A pair oh, of gloves in a day. an evening, yeah. yeah. You're a crushing machine. That's just fantastic. Thank you. Um, now, what we have to have from you is a lovely low score and then just hope, because it gets trickier as we come back up to this end, mm. that people are having to make answers up. And uh, that way we get you for the next round. Well, you see, Lynn Cho, it's time to say goodbye. Mm. It could be time. This is not my category. Oh, no. I'm going to have to go with one of what I think are the two top scorers. Yeah. I'm going to go with Treasure Island Secret 7. Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton says, Hannah B, let's see how many, about 100 people said Enid Blyton. There's no red line for you, I'm afraid, as you're the highest scorers. <laughs> 56, 56. Well, there is still a scenario in which you could stay with us at the end of this round. 156 is your total. Yeah, 13th most borrowed children's author, even to this day, Enid yeah. Blyton. Mm. 
thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Sam. Hello. Sam, welcome back. Great to have you here from Manchester. Remind us what you do. I'm a salesman. Now we put Leo on the spot, we well, better put you on the same spot. Okay. What, uh, what kind of things are you selling? I sell bookkeeping and payroll software. Oh. See, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. good. Everyone likes a bit of bookkeeping yeah. and payroll software. Payroll software? Yes, yeah. please. Well, yes, yeah, please. what's that, like little, little envelopes? Huh? Yeah. Like little brown envelopes? Well, we're maybe. trying to move everything onto email now as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, email, you, you just sold me. Uh, I'm more. More. <laughs> I want to know more, more about this, this online bookkeeping and software stuff. Unbelievable, that. No? It is. Now, there you are at 57. You have to score 98 or less. Essentially, what we're looking for is a correct answer, I suspect. Yes. Um, there's only two on the list that I really knew as well. One was Enid Blyton. So, the other one is the BFG, the Min Pins. And I think that is Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl. OK, you're saying Roald Dahl. Here comes your red line. If you can get below that with Roald Dahl... You should be able to get below that with Roald Dahl, but he's a very popular author. Let's see how many about 100 people said it. Well done. Roald Dahl, 64. Very good. Taking comfortably through the round 231 is your total. Seventh most borrowed children's author on this list, Roald Dahl. Thank you very much indeed. And now, Ian, welcome. Hello. Great to have you with us, Ian. What do you do? Uh, like Naomi, I'm a financial manager and I work for the council in Leeds, but it's, I can't make it sound interesting. <laughs> but, um, so what, what came first? Did you, did you meet working for the council or did one of you work for the council say, oh, well, I cannot be without you by day, I must come to the council too? Um, we met on the Christmas do. We, saw, we were in the same office, but we met on the Christmas do. We were nice. introduced by a famous Irish brewer. <laughs> what, through the good offices of the famous Irish brewer? Yeah, was, or was the famous brewer himself there? You could read that either way. Okay, either way. Um, that's nice. Very good. Well, now, Ian, you are on 26, and I have lovely news for you. You are through to the next round. It doesn't matter what you score. Do you want to talk us through that board? Uh, yes, but I can. And the good answer's going to have to be made up. So I think I'll go the Butterfly Lion and Warhouse with um, Malky Mayhem. Malky Mayhem! I didn't know he was still publishing. Um, okay, Marky Mayhem, let's see what happens when we say that. No bad luck. Uh, scores you 100 points. Good name, though. Uh, takes your total up to 126. Yeah, he's married to Catherine Forrester, Marky Mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we fill this board? And we'll start with MM, shall we? The wonderful... Uh, it's Michael Mayhem. <laughs> uh, Michael Morpurgo. Michael Morpurgo, yeah. We've scored you 21. We've got the top there, one of the best-selling authors in the world. John Grisham. John Grisham. We've scored you 18. A wonderful British thriller writer. Again, another one of the best-selling authors in the world. Lee Child. Lee Child, yeah. Writes the Jack Reach novels, amongst others. Ten points for that. And the best answer is at the bottom. Montana Sky was her 100th full-length novel. Well done if you said Nora Roberts. Wow. Four points for that. Good stuff. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So that brings us to the end of our first round, and it means, once again, we have to say goodbye to a pair. Oh, Lynn and Hannah, I can't bear it. You are the pair we have to send home. It's been lovely having you on the show. Far too short. I mean, it's barely enough time to make a pair of gloves and a pair of socks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for, for coming to join us. It's been great having you on. Thank you so much. Uh, Lynn and Hannah. Back to the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. And suddenly we are down to three pairs. That's just the way the pointless cookie crumbles, I'm afraid. And at the end of this round, can you believe it? It'll be two pairs. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two today is it UK hit singles. Can you all decide your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our question concerns songs with the same title. Richard. I'm going to show you uh, now five song titles on the board. We need any artist who's had a UK top 100 hit with a song with one of the following titles, please. So any UK top 100 hit up to September 2017 with any of the following songs. Very good indeed. OK, so as Richard just mentioned, we're going to put five song titles up on the board. They will stay there for the whole round. We won't be changing them halfway through. They stay up for the round. Let's find out what those song titles are. Cry Me a River. Everlasting Love, Summertime, Unchained Melody, and Yesterday. I'll read those again. Cry Me a River, Everlasting Love, Summertime, 
Unchained Melody and Yesterday. And remember, we're looking for any artist who's had a top 100 hit with a song with one of these titles. Okay, now then, Naomi. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go for Unchained Melody. And I think it's The Righteous Brothers. Okay, you're going to say The Righteous Brothers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said The Righteous Brothers. The Righteous Brothers certainly had a hit with something called Unchained Melody. 41 is what that scores you. Uh, yeah, they had a hit with that song. Uh, it was originally a number 14 hit, and they had a hit again with it uh, 25 years later. went to number one. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Leo. There's only one I know, and I feel like it's really obvious. Um, but it's the only one that I think I've got any chance on, so I'm going to have to say Justin Timberlake, Cry Me a River. Justin Timberlake, Cry Me a River, says Leo. Let's see how many of our 100 people have said that. It's right. Well, 41 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass it with Justin Timberlake. Can you get 29? Not that close. 29. Number two hit for Justin Timberlake. Uh, very well played. Thank you very much indeed. And now, Martin. So we're looking for any UK artist that had a top 100 single with one of these titles. I think I'm going to have to play safe here. And I'm going to say yesterday, The Beatles. The Beatles, says Martin. OK, well, the low-hanging fruit is now being taken, so it's going to be much tougher, I think for people coming afterwards. Uh, the Beatles, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. 58 for the Beatles. Not bad, actually. Not as high as it might have been. Uh, yep, they're a, a group from Liverpool in England. Beatles. They're spelled B-E-A-T-L-E-S. <laughs> That's well, I know. So, so it's a pun. As in beat. On beat, yeah. Interesting band. You yeah. Check them out. Oh, well, I certainly will. <laughs> I will check them out. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Check out those. Uh, 29, in fact. Leo was the best score of the past. So very well done indeed. Leo and Sam looking pretty strong at this point. Then 41, that's where we find Naomi and Ian. And then Martin and Hannah up there on 58. So, Hannah, let's hope you've got a nice low-scoring answer that will redeem that slightly higher score from your dad. But uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? Okay, so Hannah, remember we are looking for any artist that had a top 100 single with one of these titles. There you are on 58, you're all the high scorers at this point. Okay, there's one that I don't know whether to go for or not. Oh, it sounds like a lovely obscure answer, Hannah. We <laughs> go for Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff for Summertime. Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Pointless loves risk takers. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> uh, no red line for you uh, because you are the high scorers, but let's see what happens with Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff for summertime. It's right! <laughs> it's right, Hannah. And it's good to be There we are. Always salute a risk taker. 65 is your circle. Very well done indeed. Yeah, it's officially the Fresh Prince and uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff, but we accepted Will Smith a poll for our 100. And because you mentioned DJ Jazzy Jeff as well. Yeah. We'd take it. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Sam. Hello. You're on 29. 35 is your target. 35 or less. You got that sort of look of either somebody who's concentrating very, very hard or someone slightly despairing. Uh, it's the second, unfortunately. Oh, no, Sam. Mm. Not looking good, unfortunately. I'm taking an absolute stab in the dark with... I'm going to go for everlasting love. Fergie. Fergie, mm. says Sam. Uh, there is your red line. Let's see if you get below that with Fergie. Bad luck. Sorry, I've read an incorrect answer there. Scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 129. Yeah, sorry, not a hit for either the singer from the Black Eyed Peas or the ex-manager of Manchester United or the ex-wife of Prince Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Ian. Hello. Ian, you're on 41. You have to score 87 or less here. 
Okay. How are we feeling at this stage? Um, I think going back to when I was young in the eighties, I think I've got one that'll fit. Good. It might be a bit of a punt. Yes. And I think that summertime was done by Fun Boy Three. The Fun Boy Three summertime says Ian. Okay, here is your red line. It sounds so specific. Let's see. Did the Fun Boy Three have a top one hundred UK single with summertime? They did! They did! Look at that, Ian! Look at that! Now, how far down the column are we going to go with Bumboy 3? To 2! Look at that! 43 is your total. Very, very well done indeed. That was beautifully played, Ian. Yeah, very well done. It was a number 18 hit. Now, lots and lots of answers here, lots and lots of pointless ones as well. Uh, we'll start with yesterday. Tony Braxton and Ray Charles, both pointless answers for that. Also, Marianne Faithful, who had a hit with yesterday before the Beatles had a hit with it. Um, as did Matt Monroe, who would have scored you four points. Wet, 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 had a hit with it, would have scored you one. Unchained Melody is a few pointless answers here. Les Baxter and Al Hibbler, but more people might have said Leo Sayer and Liberace, both uh, pointless answers. Gareth Gates would have scored you six. Jimmy Young would have scored you 11. And Robson and Jerome had a huge hit with it, 25 points for that. Summertime, lots of pointless answers. New Kids on the Block had a hit with Summertime. Wiley, a much more recent one. Uh, the Sundays had a hit with Summertime as well. The Marcells, TQ, Billy Stewart, Al Martino, and the boy band Another Level, pointless answers for that. Everlasting Love, Howard Jones, pointless answer. Worlds Apart, another boy band. Cast from Casualty, pointless answer with Everlasting Love. Uh, Sandra, Robert Knight, Rachel Sweet, uh, Rex Smith, then Gloria Estefan and Jamie Cullen would have scored you one point in the Love Affair, the biggest scorer was seven. No pointless answers for Crimea River. Mary Wilson would have scored you one. Michael Bublé would have scored you three. And Julie London would have scored you seven. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our second round, I'm sorry we have to say goodbye to one of our players. Oh, Sam and Lou, it's you. Oh, that's a shame. We're going to miss you. Good. It's been great it's having you on the show. I'm sorry you didn't get further. Uh, it's been, yes, round two, both times, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. But thank you so much for coming to play. Great guitar. Sam and Leo. Thank you very much.